Today on Photo Kitchen, we're talking exposure, ISO, file formats, and why your camera meter is probably wrong more often than not. Hello and welcome to episode number 50 of Photo Kitchen. As always, I am your humble host, MD Welch, and today we're talking about exposure, high ISO, file formats, and how something called exposing to the right might impact all of those things in your future workflow. Now, exposing to the right is not a new concept in exposing images, but it is getting a lot more attraction. It's also rather controversial. So in this video, we're going to talk about what ETTR is, how to use it, what your workflow might be, both shooting to a camera and also shooting tethered, and also how this is going to impact your post-production. And as a bonus tip at the end, how it might also radically impact your high ISO shooting. So first of all, what is ETTR? Well, as you can see, I have created a little setup here. I have a bottle of red wine. I have a jar of sugar and a can of coffee cold brew from Costco. I'm not sponsored by any of these people, but if Costco does want to reach out for me to do product work, I am available. Now, I didn't pull these things off the shelf randomly. Well, actually I kind of did, but there is a method to this logic. The can's gonna represent specular highlights, shiny things that go out of exposure really fast or overexposed. The jar of sugar, the grains or the crystals of those sugars are gonna represent our detail in really bright areas. And then a dark area of our wine bottle is going to also be a signal for high ISO issues. Now, currently I'm shooting at F8 on my camera and I am also at an ISO of 100 and I have adjusted my shutter speed which will really be the one thing I'm going to adjust the most at the beginning of this video to get a proper exposure. And in this case, it's at a quarter of a second. Now, what does ETTR say? Well, if you look at the camera screen, more specifically, if you look at my histogram on my camera screen, you'll see that the histogram is nowhere close to the right-hand side. Although the camera meter at 0.0, .0 is saying that this is a properly exposed image. One thing we're going to find by the end of this video is that the camera meter is going to go from being kind of a rule to more of a very, very loose guideline. So what ETTR says is that you should try to push this histogram using your exposure settings as close to the right-hand side as possible. Now, people who don't like this theory or have problems with it will tell you that one big issue is that the minute you get that histogram touching the right-hand side, all is lost, you have lost detail in the image, and you will not be able to recover it. And I'm here to tell you, not necessarily but you're gonna to have to watch the whole video to see why. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture here and I am shooting tethered into capture one. You'll see that I have a JPEG and a raw image. Now I do wanna point out, I'll hit menu on my camera here and show you that I am shooting in both raw and JPEG. The JPEG is at the highest quality setting and the highest uh, pixel or resolution. So the JPEGs and the raw images should match up. Now I'm gonna to come to JPEGs towards the end of this particular video, but I do wanna point out one important thing. Even if you're shooting raw, when you're looking at the histogram on the back of your camera, when you're doing image review, that image and that histogram are previews based upon the JPEG image. So even if you're shooting in RAW only, that is a JPEG and that histogram is based on a JPEG. If we hop back over into Capture One here, you could actually see the differences in the histogram a little bit. You'll see that the RAW image is far shorter to the right-hand side than the JPEG is, meaning that the RAW is actually having more information and is not nearly as close to being overexposed as the JPEG might be. And again, more on this in a moment. Now, one thing to also point out while I'm inside of Capture One here is that Capture One doesn't agree with the meter. It thinks it's underexposed. And if I go to full screen here and look at the raw image or even the JPEG, I think we can agree that Capture One is right. Lightroom would probably say the same thing. This is not a properly exposed image. That meter in my camera is maybe seeing the bright information in the background or maybe the white in the frame here. And it is trying to prevent what is called a clipping warning. I'll turn on clipping or exposure warnings here. And anything that's red in this frame right now has no detail in it. On the RGB scale, it is at 255, which is pure white. This is the danger zone for photographers. The minute that they lose the detail in the highlights, we are taught or have been teaching people that all is lost and this cannot be recovered. And I'm here to tell you, 
that has probably been bad advice since the beginning of digital photography. But again, we have a long way to go. So first thing with exposing to the right is even if you're shooting only to camera, and even if you were shooting only as a JPEG, one basic principle of exposing to the right is to not look at the meter as a hard and fast rule. Better off to look at the histogram. Now, if you're shooting in mirrorless mode or you're shooting uh, in live view on a DSLR, you're going to be able to usually see a histogram based upon the image before you take that picture. If you're shooting on a DSLR without live view, that's fine. You could just take the picture, look at the histogram, and then adjust from there. It's just going to take a little bit more time. So I'm actually going to come in and I'm going to change the shutter speed here. So I am at an eighth of a second. You could see that the histogram, just a bit of the histogram starts to touch the right hand side. Now, if you look at the meter, it's telling me that I'm about uh, 0.7, two thirds of a stop overexposed. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the picture. And now if you look at this image, and I compare it to the other image, and I'm comparing RAWs for the moment, you can see that I have a little bit more exposure uh, warning going on, but all of the warnings right now, they're hitting those specular highlights, the silver on the can, the reflection on the jar, the reflection on the stovetop in the background. All of this stuff wouldn't have any detail in it anyways. Ansel Adams started talking about this long time ago in developing images, and the, tr the same is true now. You don't worry about specular highlights. The image looks pretty good. Uh, Capture One does believe that this is a little bit better. It's a little bit overexposed according to it, but do take note that the meter thinks that I'm 0 0.2 thirds of a stop overexposed. And one thing I will say, and I did a video on this many, many moons ago, some cameras now have something called zebras where you could actually turn this on and see where the overexposure is taking place because the histogram doesn't let you know that. It's just telling you, oh, you've gotten close to the right-hand side. But that little spike, that little thing that's over here on the far right-hand side, that is probably the specular highlights, the stovetop in the background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in now I'll come back into my grid view, but I'm gonna go back over to camera. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust the exposure. I'm gonna push it till that first real spike, which is probably the bright area of the sugar. I'm gonna push that over to the right-hand side. And now it's starting to spike up. I've gone to 1.3 seconds. The camera thinks I'm one and a third stop over. I'll go ahead and take a picture. And now if I look at these three images side by side inside of Capture One, we could see that the clipping warnings really come on, but it's still in the specular highlight area and everything is looking so far so good. Now you could make the, the, you know, the argument that the one and a third stop overexposed image is too overexposed. And more importantly, I might be in danger of losing that information inside the image. I'm losing detail in the in the sugar or in the crystals. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take one more picture. I'm going to push the exposure this time. I'm going to go well past to what the meter thinks is in reason. And you could see here as I'm I'm almost a full two stops overexposed. In fact, the Sony number is blinking at me, screaming at me, be aware, danger Will Robinson, you might be overexposing the image, losing those precious highlights but am I? So let's go ahead and take a picture. Now, as you could see, I was about two and a half seconds over uh, as far as my shutter speed goes. More importantly, two stops over according to the Sony meter. I come into uh, Capture One. Capture One's telling me that I'm way over here, getting close to one full stop overexposed, or I'm, I'm in that area. It's not really exposure in that particular case, but I'm definitely over to what uh, Capture One thinks is good. And my clipping warning is just like, it's bad. It looks more like a scene out of Predator than it does an actual photo. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to zoom in on the actual um, jar of sugar here. And we can see there's very little to no detail in the sugar. I've, I've done it. I've ruined this image. If this was a bride's dress, the white's all gone. If I was doing a landscape scene with snow, oh, I've lost all detail in the snow, right? Throw this image away. That's what we've been thinking this entire time. But watch what happens. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna manipulate my exposure slider. And I have found that the exposure slider in both Capture One and Lightroom and Lightroom Classic is a place to kind of return this exposure back to a reasonable place. You could do this with highlights and whites, but I think exposure is a little bit better. I'm gonna back off of this and actually I'm gonna zoom out. I'm not even gonna look at the crystals. I'm gonna turn exposure warning back on and I'm just gonna lower this until I'm right about to where I was before I started really pushing the exposure. I'm almost a full stop. Let's just go one more. I'm 1.1 uh, stops, at least on the exposure sliders con uh, concern, uh, 
negative on my exposure here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over and I'm going to zoom in back to 100%. And if you look closely here, you can see that the detail in the sugar has returned. This is totally contradictory to what we've been teaching or have been taught in photography, in exposure for years. Now there's more to this, but let me just take a moment to pause and talk about the cons of this. First of all, a big con is it is really hard to know how far you can push the exposure, especially if you're working with just the back of the camera. So if you're not shooting tethered like I am here, you're gonna watch that uh, histogram and be very, very careful and push it as far as you want to, but don't pile it up to the right-hand side like I've done here because you won't know until you plug these into a, a computer or download them from a memory card, how far you've gone or if you've gone too far. Even if you have something like Zebras, and I'll have the link in the description of this video to that early video that I did on Zebras, even if you have something like that turned on, they're still, even at their highest number, very, very short of what the sensor can capture, right? So that's problem number one with this. Problem number two is if I turn off this adjustment and turn off clipping warning here or exposure warning, if I was shooting for a client or I was working with a model or a subject or a bride, they're going to look at this and think I'm absolutely incompetent, right? That I don't know how to expose an image. It might even fire me right on the spot. So this is another danger zone when you're working just with the camera. Now, if you're shooting tethered, obviously you have a lot more control. You're seeing the raw image in real time and you can make those adjustments. And even better, you could have those adjustments apply to every image as you shoot. So even though that this looks like this out of camera, the minute this comes into say Lightroom Classic or in this case, Capture One, the adjustments are automatically been made and nobody knows the difference. However, I've captured a lot more information. Now, why do this? We've seen that it works. We've seen that we could expose to the right, but what's the point behind this? So first of all, I'm going to have a link in Wikipedia to exposing to the right and they get into the math of this, but essentially in a raw image, most of the detail in the photo is actually captured in the brightest part of the histogram, not the darkest parts of the histogram. So you're actually capturing more detail in a raw image this way than you are by exposing it normally, which means you also have more room in post-production. A lot of people think it's about detail. They think it's about quality. They think it's about color, but really it's about tonality, the difference between raw and JPEG at least. So let's take this a little bit further. Let's expand on this because one argument against ET TTR is, okay, this is great, but what happens if I'm in a situation where I can't overexpose an image? I'm in a dark room. I mean, this is not a bright room. I'm being lit by the sun, right? But what if I'm in a relatively dark room and the only way that I could overexpose is cranking up the ISO? Okay, no problem. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to come over into my camera and I am going to crank up the ISO and I'm not even going to do it a little bit. I'm going to do it a lot. I'm going to take my ISO all the way to 6400. Now, obviously, way blown out here. This is way too much to recover. So I'm going to lower this, but I am still going to keep it at the relatively bright amount. I'm still going to go with that 2.0 on my meter blinking uh, and try to get my histogram kind of in the same area. So now instead of several seconds, I'm at 1 1 25th of a second. I'm still at F8 for a deep depth of field uh, just because these items are so close together and an ISO of 6,400. And I'm gonna go ahead and take that picture. What you're expecting here is you're expecting a ridiculous amount of noise, especially because this is a 60 megapixel Sony camera. And usually when you do high ISOs on those cameras, you're going to see a significant amount of noise. So I'm gonna come into here. I am going to make my exposure adjustments first so I'll take my exposure down, probably again, a stop. I'll use my exposure. Exposure warning is great here, by the way, to make this adjustment. That's pretty good, right about there. And now what I am going to do is I am going to zoom in and come into an area where I expect noise to start to really occur. And that's in the dark areas or especially when areas start to go out of focus a little bit. And I'll turn off exposure warning. And where's the noise? 6400 on a 60 megapixel camera, especially this camera that I know really well, usually I have a fair amount of noise. There's no noise here. I mean, there is noise. Let's compare this to the first image that we took, which is the ISO 100. And I'll go ahead and increase the exposure here and uh, get a little bit brighter information in. So probably somewhere right about there, right? Now let's compare them side by side. 
And if we look really close, the ISO 100 pushed a little bit. I had to brighten it up. If we look at it, the noise, there is noise there. I'm not going to lie. The noise at 6400 is there, but it's not disconcerting. It's nothing that really bothers me. If I crank up the structure, or this would be texture in Lightroom Classic or Lightroom, if I crank it up so I'm really making the fine detail have more contrast, which brings out sharpness, I can see the noise here, right? I certainly could see it. Instead of shooting at a half a second at ISO 100, I'm shooting at 25th of a second at ISO 6400, and I have a reasonable amount of noise. Now, you might be thinking, oh, no, that's just what it looks like, right? Well, let's do this a different way. I'm going to come back in, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay at 6400, but I am going to lower my shutter until I'm back to 0.0. .0. I'm going to go with what the meter thinks. In this case, the meter is telling me 1 1 60th of a second, ISO 6400 F8, that's a good shot. Let's go ahead and see if it's correct. Now, again, this image is pretty dark, so I'm going to come out and I'm just going to uh, kind of do that same exposure. I was about 1.4 beforehand, I think, right about there. And I'll go ahead and accept that. And now let's compare. So here's ISO 100, here's ISO 6400 overexposed, and ISO 6400 at normal values. So 100, 6400 over, and now 6400 at 0.0. .0. Let's zoom in and check that noise value. And just to make sure that we're seeing the same level of noise, I'm gonna crank up the structure here. And so now, as we go to full screen, here's ISO 100, normally exposed, according to the meter. Here's 6400, well overexposed. And then here's 6400, balanced exposure, what the meter says. Look at the noise difference between the two. It is noticeable. Sure, there is a noticeable difference between 6400 and ISO 100. You expect that. But this is what you're expecting in the bottom left-hand corner, not what is in the top right-hand corner. Again, because what's happening with ETTR, you are putting all of the detail and all of the image information in the area of the sensor as a raw format that's going to record all of that detail with very very little noise. In a raw image, most of the noise is recorded in the very dark areas. So I can maybe even push this exposure a little bit more and a little bit more and get less noise at 6400 than I maybe get at ISO 400. So there's a lot of opportunity here to open up your exposure, even if that means increasing your ISO, as long as you're overexposing. That's the key. And you have to probably overexpose by a lot. So again, this is problematic to do in the field. It's much easier to do tethered. It's also very problematic to do from the start. So it's hard to take a picture that looks like this out of camera and trust that you're going to be able to recover all of that. Take time with it, play around, experiment with it. Now, before I conclude this, one last thing about the JPEG format, because you might be wondering, I shoot only JPEGs or shoot JPEGs in conjunction with RAWs. What does this do to JPEGs? And this actually is going to showcase how JPEGs capture tonal information. Sure, you can push a JPEG around a little bit in a camera raw editor, but watch what happens if I try to reduce this exposure here on my overexposed image. I'm going to come down and as I do this, if I go to that negative 1.1 that I had beforehand, notice that the histogram just has a, it just flatlines. There's no detail in the bright information. It's all been removed because the JPEG doesn't handle tonality the same way that RAW does. A lot of people, again, will talk about RAW being about detail and about color, right? It's not. It's about tonality. It really is about tonality and how much tonal information you can capture, especially if you're overexposing the image or exposing to the right. And I totally understand that this is a really kind of controversial subject. There's a lot of people who do YouTube videos on how this isn't a good idea. There's also certain genres of photography that this might not suit. Astrophotography comes to mind. I haven't experimented with this. However, product photography, portrait photography, this look works really well on. But again, how you're shooting, whether camera only or tether, is also going to dictate how far you feel comfortable pushing this. So this concludes our look at Exposing to the Right or ETTR. I would love to hear about your experiences with this in the comment section below. Are you working in ETTR right now or using it for your exposure? If so, what's your workflow? If not, 
Does, did this video change your mind? Are you going to start maybe pushing that exposure a little bit closer to the right? Is your meter now the least trustworthy thing in your camera equipment? I would love to hear about your experiences. Also, if you haven't already done so, please like this video, subscribe to this channel. Also, share this video with others who are just getting into camera exposures and help them understand how much information they have available to them in raw images when they're exposing to the right. Until next time, I'm MD Welch wishing you all the best from the photo kitchen.